Have you ever stopped to wonder if there were other types of civilizations living amongst us? More advanced types of civilizations? This is actually a question that most people ask themselves at a certain point in life when they get to know about the ancient Egyptian pyramids, the Elora Caves, Bermuda Triangle and many other mysterious places. There are a number of magnetic anomalies found in such structures. Mysterious places that till today baffle experts. In this video, we are going to be talking about some of these unexplained places that defy absolutely everything that we know of. Let's start with the Elora Caves located at Aurangabad, Maharashtra. There is a mysterious temple called the Kailasa. It is a temple of Lord Shiva. And the construction and architecture of this ancient temple is one of the greatest archaeological mysteries of the 21st century. The Kailasa Temple is a monolithic carved structure. In other words, it wasn't built using structures or rocks. It was actually carved into the mountain. It is huge. For instance, this is the only temple in the entire world where the carvers actually started from the top of the rock and excavated downwards. By looking at it, it's as if it was carved by some type of technology that we still don't have today. According to archaeologists, it is estimated that approximately 400,000 tons of rock were removed from the site in the making of this temple. This sheer amount of heavy rock was never found or seen by anyone in and around the site. The rock is known to be around 6,000 years old, but when exactly it was carved into a temple is still a mystery. It's the kind of structure that actually makes you wonder if there is anything else out there that we're not aware of. In a video gone viral from Mexico, you can see lights in the sky that at first appear to be from a storm or something like that. I can't see any source of light coming from the ground, so these are not party lights or something like that. Whatever it is, it's coming from above. And it left the two people who were taping this very much baffled. Check this out. <laughs> now what if some of these structures such as the Elora Caves, the Egyptian pyramids and many other places were actually built by the same civilization? I know, it may sound crazy, doesn't it? But some researchers in Peru may actually agree. Check this out. We can take some other things here. Because if you see this kind of main construction in the lower part... Dr. Theo Parides is explaining that some of the constructions in this site are probably not made by the Incas in Peru. And he also notes that if you've been in Egypt, you will notice that some of the constrictions are very similar. How could this happen if they were thousands of miles away from each other? And supposedly there were no airplanes at the time. Hey, hey, water. What the? where you see this really fine masonry. If you have been in Egypt, one of the main things that is going to come to your head when you will see the work down there is that it's the same technique, the same hand. The ones who have been done part of the sacred chamber in Egypt are the same guys who have been doing this. This is the same hand. 
I've been to Egypt eight times. Each time that I've gone, we've had access to more sites that previously were off limits. For instance, where is Atlantis? How did the Easter Island monoliths actually get there? The elongated skulls that were found in Peru? The Egyptian pyramids and many other constrictions that were found are some examples of the most intriguing mysteries that we have here on Earth. Well, because it would require very advanced technology to do anything like that. What if, in the very distant past, there was some sort of advanced civilization that made this Earth their home and all of a sudden disappeared? Dude. Oh my god. What the f***, man? What is this, dude? I was told by a local source that when they were first discovered in modern times by um, archaeologists in the 19th century, that humanoid were found inside. Not humans, but humanoid. What if there was something that could actually prove this theory? People keep saying, where are the tools? I think the tools were taken with them. You are never going to believe this. You are You're never going to believe what yes. we've seen. Tell us Come look exactly. At this. Come look at this. Go, show them. Go show them where it is. Go show them up there. Wow. All right, here we go. In 1963, a family in Cappadocia, Turkey, decided to renovate their homes, and in the process, they uncovered an underground array of tunnels, rooms, and living areas, which included many thousands of ventilation shafts and every needed constructional aspect of an underground city which could accommodate at least 20,000 people. This city came to be known as the Rinkuyu Underground City, which is beneath the Rinkuyu, a town in Cappadocia. The construction of this city is claimed to date back to thousands and many thousands of years ago. Our mining expertise today does not compare since our mining is certainly not without catastrophic collapse. There is no evidence of these structures ever suffering collapse at all. So who actually built this underground city? These and many more ancient sites still remain a huge mystery. So you're saying maybe that these, some of these ancient constructions were not built by, by us? Well, possibly. You know, again, people, the alternatives are either a lost ancient civilization of whose origin we know nothing about, you know, so quote unquote Atlanteans or something. So I, I don't see any other alternative because the megalithic construction is technically almost perfect. It's beyond, in some cases, beyond the capacity of of uh, what we can do today with modern machinery. And we're standing in front of a, lo a, blo a line of what I call line of blocks, which um, the uh, discussion is, are they natural or were they put here by um, human or some kind of um, interference? Now this, of course, this crack here is, you know, from an earthquake or something like that, or the tree above, putting its roots down, but these these tell the story as far as I'm concerned. In the early 1990s, a peculiar formation of rocks was found in Kaimanawa Forest in New Zealand. Coined as Kaimanawa Wall, these rather intriguing rocks were dated to be at least 2,000 years of age. The theory is that this might have been man-made because of the perfect way they were cut and put together. Now if this is true, it could prove the existence of a pre-Polynesian culture, a culture that supposedly existed on the island of New Zealand before the Maoris. In other words, it could push forward the theory that there was some sort of lost civilization in the past that we have no knowledge about. To find such even right angle cracking throughout this wall, it seems uh, too much of a... It doesn't seem like it can be natural. I wonder if there is something below this Kaimanawa wall in New Zealand. But that's not all. I wonder also if there was some sort of civilization that lived in the past that built such similar structures such as the pyramids and many others. 
For instance, in Australia there are Egyptian hieroglyphs that were found embedded into a stone. This is something that Brian Forrester researched and investigated into a couple of years ago. Check this out. Actually closer to a town called Gosford, and it's here that there are some hieroglyphics which appear to be Egyptian. What's impressive is not only that it's been translated by Yusuf Awiyan and Mohammed Ibrahim, who are again e Egyptian experts in hieroglyphics, but also that the weathering and also the presence of lichen and moss is the same on the surface as it is in the indentations. And so to me, not being a geologist, but that would indicate significant age of both. But these are not the only mysterious rocks that can be found in the middle of nowhere that supposedly had some sort of interference. The rock of Naslaf, perfectly cut in half, found in the middle of the desert in Saudi Arabia, seems to have been cut by someone or something in a very distant past. No one knows till this day how it ended up looking like this. Some theorize that it was the works of nature. Other researchers claim that this is mostly impossible, taking into consideration the perfect laser looking like cut in the rock. Not to mention that petroglyphs can be found in both sides of the rock. Now, if we pay attention little by little, it starts to become very clear that something was present here on Earth, something that was probably way much more advanced in technology than we are today. Now, I don't know about you, but I've watched the Flintstones many times when I was younger, and there was one thing that I used to question myself while watching it, and that was if dinosaurs and humans actually coexisted. Now, the official scientific explanation is that they didn't. We are here after our long journey to the San Gabriel dinosaur footprints. Which is right there. Stepped right there. Amy, put your foot back in it again. Stepped right there. Right there. There's another one right here. Right here. The official response for such a question is that humans and non-avian dinosaurs never share this place, Earth, together. We did not ride them nor keep them as pets or harness them for domestic labor. The non-avian dinosaurs died out 66 million years ago. Now this is where things get really interesting. In 1562, Peter Bruegel painted what appeared to be two people riding two sauropods, a dinosaur species that was supposedly extinct millions of years ago. The thing is, the official explanation is that these are just camels. However, there are some people who look at the painting and disagree that these are just camels. That they don't look like camels at all. Now here's the catch. The first dinosaur species that was discovered was in 1819 by William Buckland. In other words, how did Peter Bruegel come to paint dinosaurs in mid-1500s unless, of course, he had seen it with his own eyes? It makes us wonder, doesn't it? Now the thing is, if humans and dinosaurs really shared an existence, at some point there should be footprints of humans and dinosaurs together. And well, there is a YouTuber who claims he found one. Here's the video. Hello, we are at the San Gabriel River, the South San Gabriel River that is, where there are many dinosaur footprints found right on the other side of those trees right there. So we're out looking for more footprints and we believe we've stumbled across a very large human footprint and here it is. Looks like a giant footprint. Put my foot right there and it looks like the pinky toe, whatever the toe that is and two more toes and then a big toe. Now the more I look at this footprint, if this is a footprint, it actually does look like a giant human. If you move a little bit more that way, it looks like another big footprint, which has not really retained its original form. The thing is, this YouTuber was at the San Gabriel River on the other side of the river where dinosaur tracks can be found. And if you haven't ever seen them, here they are. And here's another one of his. 
they're probably like, I wish you would stop stepping in the foot so I could see them. All right. And then there's another one there. And then so came right here. Looks like he pivoted a little bit right here. It's a big dude, big strides. Look at this. Oh, I'm doing the splits. Now there are more dinosaur tracks that can be found all over the world and in my opinion it's very curious how they all look alike. There was another YouTuber by the name of WillyBob9999 that found dinosaur tracks, he doesn't say exactly where. And again, the dinosaur tracks are very similar to the ones that are found all over the world. But it's very interesting because just next to these dinosaur tracks, an area is being paved. And I guess these dinosaur tracks are going to end up paved also. Well anyways, what do you think about all this? Do you think there's any chance that humans and dinosaurs or dragons coexisted at some point in time in a very distant past or is it just our imagination? Now if there's one thing that we are probably very proud of in today's world is the technology that we have achieved. To be honest, we have achieved the unthinkable if you compare just a few decades ago. However, there is still a lot for us to learn. And for some mysterious reason, one of these things, one of these technologies that we still haven't mastered is ancient construction like the ones in Puma Punku and many others all over the world. To this day, archaeologists and stonemasons are very much baffled by the fact that some of these constructions can't be replicated even in today's world. The Puma Punku megalithic stones, for example, can be found in Tiwanaku in Bolivia. They are megalithic stones that seem to be scattered all over. It's like they were thrown there by someone or something. It just doesn't make sense. And the thing is, some of these stones weigh more than 100 tons and are more than 25 feet tall. Which makes it very interesting to think about how did they get there. Now some researchers believe that they were not carved in ancient techniques, that they may have been carved with advanced technology because of the precision that some of these rocks present. And to make it all more intriguing, some of these stones have magnetic properties. Yeah, they're going in the opposite direction. Right? Which makes me think maybe there's something inside of them. Now the curious thing is that if we try to replicate the ancient techniques and redo these megalithic stones, it's not possible. So how was this done 2000 years ago or even more? In 1936, in Baghdad, a jar was found. Two years later, a German archaeologist noticed that there was something strange about this jar. It was made out of clay with a stopper made of asphalt. Sticking through the asphalt is an iron rod surrounded by a copper cylinder. The curious thing is that if you put vinegar or an acidic liquid inside the jar, it becomes a battery. It can actually produce 2 volt of electricity. So some people coined it the Baghdad battery. And to this day, there is a large discussion if this was indeed the first electric battery or if it is just a coincidence. On this wall, we see what appears to be giant light bulbs, crooks tubes, right? In ancient times, still today, the snake is often seen to be a symbol of electricity, Kundalini energy. Snake. This here is a dead pillar, but it actually looks like it's a Faraday. And what you can see is this is not talking about wireless electricity because it's plugged in. To this condenser here. So they're saying this is symbolic, it's supposed to be lotuses. Why is it plugged in if it's symbolic? Whatever here, Hakim says the texts here are saying a warning. They are issuing a warning that this ancient knowledge of power that can be abused. Now you've probably heard of the magnetic hills or gravity hills around the world, right? And you've also probably heard that most of them are part of some sort of visual illusion. And well, that is actually true in most of the cases. But in some rare cases, they are completely unexplained. <laughs> For instance, in Machakos, Kenya, there is a very good example of what is a gravity hill.
also in Lewisbury, Pennsylvania, there is a very interesting one where it's basically impossible to explain how this is a visual illusion. What is known as a gravity hill, they're all over the United States. This one, and, and the gravity hill is right here, I'm gonna sh show you what happens. But anyway, you drive up here, you stop at the white line, put your car in neutral, and you will roll uphill. Here to the white line, and then... Dan Bell Film It YouTube channel is going to show how it's done in Pennsylvania. He puts his car in neutral and well, he goes up. Fascinating. <laughs> if it's an illusion or not, let me know what you think. In Saqqara, Egypt, there is a Serapium located northwest of the Pyramid of Djoser. It was a burial place of Apis bulls. Inside this Serapium, there are a series of tombs. Each tomb weighs is more than a hundred tons, and the rocks in which the tombs were made of are not loco. In other words, they had to be made or brought from another place. Now the crazy thing about this is that there is a underground passageway to where these boxes are located, and it's basically impossible for 2,000 people or more to be carrying these boxes inside of these tunnels towards the chambers where they are found today. To work. So when we see the other ones also inside the chambers that's finished, hmm? mm -hmm. how would this be finished if you don't have space for the people to be working around? Basic and simple question. So let's just get this bull thing straight. The largest box found inside the Serapium is 7 feet tall. The lid itself weighs more than 50 tons and it was actually found open. The pathways are really straight and there are dozens of these boxes inside. Each one of them weighs at least 100 tons. The quality of the finished surface of the body of one of the stones is much superior to the writings found in it which makes no sense at all. No one knows till this day how the boxes actually were lowered to the chambers where they are at. And it would take 200 people at least to move the lid open. Now take into consideration that this is a really small place. You can barely fit one person between the box and the wall. And in one of the guides believes that there is a secret passageway, a hidden door of some sort in one of these chambers. Yeah, and there used to be other devices, I believe, in this place, which we can see that they were, there was the, there is a carving in the wall to house something else. I believe it could be a false door, or what we know as the false door. Not to mention the fact that they would need light. Today, that we have electrical systems, they didn't. They used fire. You see this, the tunnel itself is right. all carved in the bedrock. Right. So imagine if we turned off this light now. Hyde goes on to explain that if you turn off the lights, you can't see anything. So how did they do this? There are no markings of fire on the walls or on the ceiling. In the dark, how you gonna, what are you going to be using? A flame? There is no even markings of any of this in the dark. There, and there are no openings in the ceiling. The guide continues on to explain that the hallway isn't even wide enough for 2,000 men to carry this megalithic box. So how the heck did these box get in there?
well this is it for today folks don't forget to check out our merch we have new t-shirts don't forget also to subscribe to the channel press that notification button leave a like if you enjoyed the video share if you think this is important we also have more videos if you're interested and i'll see you again Well, this is it for now, but the question is, what really happened in ancient times? What is your opinion? If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to the channel with notifications for more videos like this, and I'll see you guys again.